to be able to tell you about some cool technology that we've been developing at Chainlink Labs Research, Chainlink Confidential Compute. You're probably familiar with this triangle, the triad of security properties, confidentiality, integrity, availability. If you listen to the marketing pitch of many blockchains, they will tell you that they offer you security by default. And it's true that they offer an unprecedented level of integrity and availability. This is what blockchains are good at. But barring some exceptions, most of them actually have thrown confidentiality out of the door in favor of transparency. And for many use cases, that's actually a good thing. Transparency has its uses. But there are a lot of use cases that require confidentiality as well. A large part of the internet exists behind paywalls and private accounts. And if you cannot offer confidentiality, then you cannot run that application on a blockchain. So blockchain is actually missing out on a vast spectrum of applications just because it cannot offer confidentiality. That's where we come in. We are announcing Chainlink Confidential Compute to unlock private smart contracts on any, blo on any blockchain and bring confidentiality onto your blockchain. Here's another triangle that you may be familiar with, the, uh, the, um, the trilemma of blockchain. Security, decentralization, and scalability. Legend has it that you can only choose any two. The same trilemma seems to apply to some extent to confidential computing technologies. On the top left, you have the cryptographic heavyweights, protocols like zero-knowledge, secure multi-party computation, and fully homomorphic encryption. Beautiful pieces of science, beautiful pieces of mathematics, and much progress has been made over the past decade or two. But if it comes to actually generically supporting execution in a very scalable, real-time way, they're just quite not there yet, but we're keeping our eyes on them. At the bottom, you have trusted execution environments, or TEs, also called secure enclaves. They don't give cryptographic guarantees per se, but hardware-based guarantees of the confidentiality and the correctness, the ver public verifiability of the execution taking place inside the trusted execution environment. Efficiency-wise, they're very performant. They essentially run at native processor speed. So what we are doing in this first incarnation of Chainlink Confidential Compute is that we're going to rely on these trusted execution environments, but add more safeguards to make sure that they're really, really secure. Let's dive in a bit more detail. Um, Chainlink Confidential Compute is adding um, two or three new, new capabilities to the CRE. I'm going to talk about two of them here. Uh, the first is confidential data management, sometimes also referred to as the vault DOM. What it does is it lets a network of nodes jointly generate a, a public encryption key so that no single node knows the corresponding decryption key. Rather, you need a threshold of these nodes to collaborate in order to be able to decrypt a ciphertext. If you're curious how such a key can get generated, check out Philip Schindler's talk later in the session um, on Chainlink DKG. Now, what the confidential data management capability can do is essentially threshold re-encryption. It can re-encrypt any secret that was encrypted under the master key to any recipient's public key. And by doing that, you can actually make a smart contract or a workflow done the gatekeeper to an encrypted secret. The smart contract and the workflow done can decide at any moment which secret will be revealed to which recipient, which is already a pretty powerful primitive. Now that is just selectively revealing secrets. What if we want to add computation on those secrets? Well, the confidential data management can help here because what we're going to do is instead of revealing the secrets, the private inputs to a computation, to a person or an entity, we actually encrypt it under the public key of an enclave in a pool of TEEs that are forming the confidential computing capability. So this enclave will receive inside the enclave, decrypt the private inputs, perform the computation, and create a cryptographic attestation confirming that this execution has been performed in a secure enclave confirming that these are the inputs that it was working on without revealing any of the secrets. So you have the public verifiability without revealing any of, of the confidential information on there. I told you that we're going to add some safeguards to make those TEs even more secure. First one is we're not just going to accept any TEs into our network. We're only going to rely on 
NFTs hosted by reputable cloud providers. That makes a difference because thereby we essentially profit from their physical and uh, organizational security policies to also secure the TEs that we are working with. Secondly, we are going to enforce a strict need-to-know principle on all computation taking place in those enclaves. And we can do that because using the, using the confidential data management, we can make sure that the only thing that gets decrypted inside the enclave are the exact inputs that are needed for this computation. So by doing that, you can essentially with razor sharp precision say, this computation needs these inputs and that's the only thing that this DEE is going to learn, nothing more. In particular, we're never going to put any master key of the system or even application-wide master key inside a single TE. We consider that unnecessary risk. We have the capabilities. We can limit that uh, to a minimal view and a strict need-to-know principle. And that's just getting us started. So that's how we're going to deploy in the beginning. We have an ambitious and progressive roadmap to improve security more and more as we continue. On the roadmap, we want to be able to execute instead of in a single T, perform the same execution in multiple T's at the same time so that you can verify the results on multiple T's. It improves your integrity. We want to further add mathematical guarantees of the correctness of execution by letting TE prove in zero knowledge that it actually performed the computation correctly. And we would like to make sure that we can also um, execute a computation spread out over multiple TEEs so that no single TEE sees any of the secret, even inside of the TE. One can do that with secure multi-party computation or fully homomorphic encryption. So you see that we have a, a, roadway, uh, a roadmap to go here. Um, the, the end goal is that every user can essentially choose that for his or her application, you can choose the right balance between security and performance for whatever application that you are building. If you want to know more details about how we're achieving all of this, check out the white paper. It's linked from the blog post. Um, we're pretty proud of this technology, so uh, definitely uh, check it out if you want to learn more. Now, what can we do with this technology? Let me go over a couple of use cases. The first use case essentially takes us back to the, the origins of Chainlink, connecting blockchains to the outside world. Suppose that you're a developer and you want to create a DeFi app that in its process calls out to a Bloomberg API. Now, for your Bloomberg API calls, you have an API key and you cannot just put that API, API key on a blockchain because that's an expensive subscription you probably don't even want to put that on all of the nodes of a Chainlink network because all of those nodes would get insight into the, would, would learn the API key. What you can do with Chainlink Confidential Compute is that you can encrypt that API key and send it to the CRE so that when the smart contract needs to make a call out to the Bloomberg API, it charges an enclave to decrypt the API key inside the secure enclave so that an HTTPS tunnel gets set up from inside the enclave to the Bloomberg API, and the enclave can read the result and forward it back on chain with an attestation on top of it. So this way you get a verifiable result without leaking any of the secrets that are taking place here. We call that the confidential connectivity capability. It's a generic tool that we can use for, for many other purposes. Including for the next uh, use case, this is a use case that apparently is quite common in, financial, um, in the financial world, where specialized data providers sell proprietary data for a fee to paying customers. This could be market data, this could be portfolio weights, there's a variety of data there. Now, often for regulatory and liability reasons, they would like to have some untamperable confirmation that they have made the data available to the, all of the customers at the same time, and a secure log of which customer access the data at which point in time. We can easily solve that with confidential compute. We can have the confidential connectivity layer from the previous uh, use case, have it absorb the data, fetch the data from the data providers in encrypted form, store it in encrypted form, log the rec receipt of the data on chain, and also accept the requests coming from co customers through confidential connectivity, log the requests on chain, and re-encrypt that encrypted data to only those customers who are allowed to request it and, and, and did request it. Now, this is all possible. It gets even more exciting 
when we actually let uh, those customers perform computation on that data. Something that, for example, you could do is let customers uh, submit an encrypted strategy, a hidden strategy, on what kind of token trades they want to perform based on that secret data as soon as it comes available. So as soon as this data comes available, an enclave will be charged with the encrypted strategy and encrypted data, all decrypted inside the enclave. You apply the strategy to that data, and out comes the resulting token trades that need to be performed on chain. So all that you see on chain is those token trades that were just computed by the confidential uh, chain link confidential compute uh, layer. Now, if there's one use case of um, of chain link confidential compute that everybody thinks of when you see it, then it's definitely private tokens. Yes, we can do private tokens, and even in a fairly simple way. In the simplest incarnation, you can just look at that as um, as a simple ERC20 account model where every user has a balance. The only difference is that now it's an encrypted balance that you keep on chain. Users who want to make a transaction, they can also hide the amount that, that is being involved in this transaction by encrypting it. And what the uh, smart token contract will then do is reach out to Chainlink Confidential Compute with the encrypted amount and the encrypted sender and receiver balances so that inside the enclave, the amount can be subtracted from the sender balance added to the uh, recipient balance re-encrypt the balances and uh, submit the re-encrypted balances back on chain. On top of that, the enclave could also perform any compliance checks that you want. So what you get here, what you can actually get here is compliant private tokens, which is of course the, the way you want, want to do it in, in a compliant way. This only hides the amount and encrypt the balances. If on top of that you would like to hide also the identity of the sender and the receiver of the transaction, you can do that too. You can actually let users submit completely encrypted transactions that only get decrypted inside the enclave. And instead of encrypting separate balances, encrypt the whole uh, balance table as one big blob that gets fed into the Chainlink confidential compute and gets uh, re-encrypted and sent back on chain. Now that's the basic way of describing it. Um, there are further optimizations to avoid having too much data um, going on between, chain, uh, between the blockchain and Chainlink confidential compute, but that's the basic idea. And a final use case is private identity and compliance. Digital identity is a blocker for many use cases on, on blockchain because there is no good identity solution there. It is, digital identity is starting to take off in the Web2 world with credentials that are verifiable. The only problem with them is that they're often too revealing in terms of personal information and that often also the cryptography needed to verify the credentials is not quite compatible with your favorite chain where you want to be able to verify them. Chainlink Confidential Compute can solve that problem because you can let your users show their Web2 credentials to an enclave so that only inside the enclave the details of the credentials will be visible. They will get verified there. And what the enclave does in exchange is submitting a very low information credential. For example, this person has the required age or has passed all my KYC checks. And in a format that is efficiently verifiable on chain so that the user can use that credential to authenticate himself on chain. There are plenty more features that you can add to this, but this, uh, this, this uh, is the basic idea. Now, all of these use cases hopefully can give you a taste of the possibilities of Chainlink Confidential Compute. I'm sure that we're missing still a whole lot of other use cases. So in case you've ever been thinking about a problem, wouldn't this be great to solve on a blockchain, but you couldn't because confidentiality wasn't there, look at this technology get in touch with us, we'd love to brainstorm with you, and we'd love to build it together with you. Thank you very much.